الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونتوب إليه ونستغفره ونسأله العفو والعافية في الدنيا والآخرة والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أرسله ربه رحمة للعالمين فأدى الرسالة وبلغ الأمانة إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله We praise Allah the one almighty, the sublime, the unique. We devote ourselves to him in full gratitude and we ask him to shower his blessing and peace on his mercy to the world's, the last of his messengers, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We bear witness that there is no deity save Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of Allah. Dear brothers and sisters, last week I had the privilege of talking to you immediately after the sad event of the shooting on 4th of July at the airport. And when we talked about this condemnable event, we made it clear that unfortunately that there are some pockets and some agencies of hate and the prejudice who try to spin things around to exploit the anxiety of the nation and the pain of the victims and their families to add more to the process of isolating Muslims in the United States these days. And we talked about that in some full detail. I just want to do today to build up, not in the event itself, the event is being investigated, but on the ramifications of trying to isolate Islam and the Muslims by people who are few, nonetheless vocal, and who wouldn't like to see Islam as a guiding component in America. They don't want to see Muslims as players in the future of the United States. So what they do is to try to isolate Muslims through the two processes that I talked about last time. I want to remind you the process of boxing, putting Muslims in a box and right danger so nobody will come close. Or the other maneuver which I called the box of candy maneuver, where you offer a box of candy and you say, enjoy it, but one of them is poisonous. Which one we don't know? How do you know it we don't know? Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. It is inevitable, but here is the box. The box is delicious candy. So these are the kinds of talks. Islam is good, religion of peace, all Muslims are good, peace-loving, but there are few who are going to blow us up or shoot at us. How do we know these few, how to work together to isolate them or to get them? No answers. The end result is you will dump that box of candy. You are not going to taste it. Shall we get concerned? Yes, we should. Because our field of action as Muslims, as believers in God, 
and that God, when he created people, he gave them mission in life. Life is with a purpose. And we Muslims as citizens with the mission, guided by the Quran and following a model of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have things to share. And these things to share are in the field of the minds and the hearts of people. You cannot function isolated from the minds and the hearts of people. So any trial to close the minds and to envelop the hearts in an envelope of fear for us is a matter of concern. We have been ordered by the Quran not to coerce people, not to compel people. We have been ordered to believe that the diversity that God created in colors, ethnicities, ethnicities, shapes, and religions are the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Have his will been otherwise, he could have created people the same. And we believe that there is no compulsion in religion. لَا إِكْرَعَ فِي الدِّينِ we believe that فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Whoever wants to follow a certain, the guidance can follow whoever doesn't. It is his or her prerogative. We have been told that. We have been taught that in our religion. So what we are left with is a decent, nice discourse to share our beliefs and our agenda and our projects with the fellow citizens of different colors, races, and creeds. And the Quran says, ادعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة. You call for the way of your Lord through wisdom and nice preaching. So when you are not allowed to coerce people, as a matter of fact, we are not commissioned at all to convert people. We are ordered to make things clear. What we believe in, whether you agree with it or you disagree, is a secondary issue. But you ought to know what it is. Then you make an intelligent decision. Whether you agree, you want to criticize, you are skeptical or what have you. But step number one is to make it clear and to make it known. So any trial to isolate us behind the fences of fear and the prejudice is actually a matter of great concern to us as Muslims and as American citizens. Because when you live within a pluralistic democracy, you have to have all avenues opened. Everything is on the table so that, so that we can have intelligent exchange of ideas and good collaboration and cooperation for what is better for the society. So isolation we have to understand that is not a new phenomenon. A way to obstruct the truth is to isolate the people who are carrying it. Let us go to the Quran as early as Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham. What did his father tell him? لَأَرْجُمَنَّكَ وَهْجُرْنِي مَلِيَّ I will stone you and I want you to stay away. Stay away from me. That's isolation. This is a process of isolation. The people of Lut, لَنُخْرِجَنَّكُمْ مِنْ أَرْضِنَا We'll drive you out. لَنُخْرِجَنَّهُمْ مِنْ أَرْضِنَا إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ We will drive them out of our land. They are trying to purify themselves. So try isolate them. Musa alayhi salam, Moses, the response to him that you should be isolated with the elite. You are one of us, not one of them. أَوَلَمْ نُرَبِّكَ فِينَا صَغِيرًا وَلَبِثْتَ فِينَا مِنْ عُمُرِكَ سِنِينَ We brought you up. You are with us. You should be isolated from the masses. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the most difficult times when he was besieged and isolated in the Sha'ba of Mecca with his family and his tribe for three continuous years so that he doesn't mix and share with people the, used who, the way he used to do. 
So the weapon of isolation is not a new weapon. It is an effective weapon. It was used against the messengers and the prophets. And it is now being used by some. So what is our job now is to defy that, to defy isolation. How? Number one, step number one is to be recognized, recognized as Muslims and as citizens of this United States of America. Recognized for what we stand for and what we believe in. If we want to blot out our complexions and efface our identity to melt in a crowd no matter what, you are not recognized. You are finished. You are gone. In this life and as far as we know in the hereafter as well. خسر الدنيا والآخرة وذلك هو الخسران المبين. This is the imminent loss. Because you are not adding anything. You are not recognized for what makes you, you. For what makes our community the American Muslim community. We have to be recognized as such. As Muslims who are guided by the Quran, following the footsteps of the Messenger, والسلام, exercising the enjoining of what is right, the forbidding what, of what is wrong, in improving their country in which they live and to which they are loyal. Those are ABCs. We have to do that. And if we, we do it, we will be then recognized. By recognized, I mean people will agree with you or disagree with you, but they will not ignore you because you are there. The second step is to move to respectability, to be respected. To be respected does not mean to be followed, does not even mean to be agreed with. I personally respect lots of people with whom I radically disagree, but they are respectable people. How can we get to that by being who we are to start with as Muslims? We are supposed to be the expression of mercy. As Quran says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ The guardians of justice, regardless to who will benefit or who will lose, including ourselves. كُونُوا قَوَّمِينَ لِلَّهِ شُعَدَاءَ بِالْقِسْطِ As the Quran says. Should be the speakers of the truth. قُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا Should be the protectors of human dignity for all humans, regardless to race, color, and the creed, as Quran says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Allah says, He, in His majesty, bestowed dignity on the progeny of Adam. This cuts through everything. As American citizens, we stand for this constitution, for the values that are supposed to be adopted by America, even if they are not. But we stand for these values, the values of pluralism, the values of free discourse, the values of the right to dissent, the values of the right to express the unpopular opinion, the values to speak the truth about you, what you believe, even if it is not singing the exact party line of the majority or the big crowd. When we do that and we do it, two things will happen. Number one, we will respect ourselves. We cannot be respected by others if we don't respect ourselves. Number two, we should show respect to others. We cannot disrespect people in our talks, in our conduct, and expect people to respect us. This is, this is actually lunacy. It doesn't work this way. God Almighty did not create human beings this way. Even, even at every level, you show respect, you expect respect, provided that you respected yourself first. If we do that, and if God gives us the, the enlightenment and the stamina to do it, then we defy the isolation. 
and this will be our ultimate success at this very critical period. We pass this very trying test that we are going through these days. Ask Allah for forgiveness and for empowerment. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين. My dear Muslims, to be able to do what we talked about, we have number one to be consistent. What we say in private should be the same like what we say in public. And what we do, our actions, should match our speech and our talks. This is crucial and that's important to maintain consistency and integrity. So when we say we are Muslims, we know what it means. We worship Allah Almighty with no partner. We believe in the messengers and in the scriptures, and we are the believers in accountability and the day of judgment, and we are the expression of the mercy, justice, freedom, and dignity, as all stated in the Quran. We have to be consistent, not in saying that, in doing that. To say that we are Americans, we have to be consistent in being loyal to the country, to try to protect it, to protect its safety, to protect its constitution, to protect its values, to protect the civil liberties, to protect the right of every citizen to speak out freely without the fear of being profiled or being detained or being held without questioning. That's part of our agenda as Muslims and as American citizens and we should cooperate with every American who believes in that? Those who want to protect America but at the same time lose its soul, and at the end up we protect something that's non-existent, we are not with them. Those who don't feel so eager to protect the country from enemies or from its own biases, we can see an eye to eye with those also. But we should be very consistent in living up to being Muslims and to being Americans at the same time without hesitation and without schizophrenia. This is very important. The second thing we should be very aware that those that we talk about who want to isolate Islam and the Muslims are not the majority. They are a very limited extreme minority. So we should not develop our feelings towards all the citizens or the majority of the citizens or the mainstream based on this minority. We should be very appreciative to the reality that it is the normal American men and women, the common American men and women who flocked to our centers and our mosques to protect us against bias, prejudice, and hate crime. We have to celebrate that, to celebrate being a part of that collective mosaic of people of decency. We are aware of the few who want to destroy all of this because they have private agendas, usually not serving America, exploiting America. We have to be aware of them without developing a negative feeling or defensiveness or discomfort within our society and within our country. Last but not least, we should be very aware, and it is really childish not to think this way, that there will be those who will penetrate our communities. Speaking holier than thou, more Catholic than the Pope, more royal than the king, bravado speaking, and pouring statements of anger and of despair and of resentment. 
the people who speak for the Muslim community are the ones who sacrifice and serve the community. This is no time for the walk-in stars or the suddenly appearing bravado and, 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 and leaders. This is the time for our community to be aware, to be mature, to open up for the rest of the society and to be very consistent in being Muslims and in being Americans. And I repeat, being Americans doesn't mean that you go and you sell your soul to the whatever current is there or to be an agent of the authority. We are not agents, we are partners. We are not enemies. We are not agents, we are partners. And that we have to engrave in our statements until people can see it clearly. And we should act according to that. If we do that, we will defy the isolation trials that has been imposed on the messengers and the prophets and is being imposed in anyone who stands up loudly and speak the truth. But the truth always prevails because Allah pushes the truth forward. I ask Allah to give us the guidance and to enlighten our minds and to empower our hearts and to give us the clarity of vision and to give us the courage to pursue the truth and to stand by justice and to fulfill our mission as good citizens and as good Muslims. I ask Allah to instill the love of his cause and the love of each other in our hearts. I ask him to give us the love to humanity that will enable us to be his agents on this earth. Allahumma ghfir lana wa rahamna wa aafina wa afu anna wa tawallana wa tub alayna wa arina al-haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna tiba'a وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أخن الصلاح إن الصلاة تنهى من الفحشاء والمنكر